Hey guys, welcome to our Airstream. More specifically, welcome to our Airstream kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you seven tips for setting up your RV kitchen. So come on. Okay, tip number one sounds a little funny, but it's something to think about. I want you to be realistic. So this means, are you someone that cooks all the time? Are you a microwave queen? Are you a grill king? Think about these things before you start packing your RV kitchen. Because if you're somebody that just uses the microwave, you don't need to bring 10 pots and pans. But if you're Paula Dean on the road, you gotta make room for all your goodies. So that is the first thing I suggest, is to be realistic. Be honest with yourself about what kind of cooking you're gonna do and pack according to that. It's fine dining here. Meal with a view. So my second tip is to consider where you're gonna be camping because this will make an impact on how you cook. Are you gonna be in a national park? Are you gonna be in an RV resort with full hookups? These things matter because the number one consideration that you gotta think of is your water consumption. Are you gonna have access to full hookup water where you can wash 20 pots and pans if you want to? Or are you gonna be using the water very sparingly because you're trying to drag out that freshwater supply in a national park? So those are things to think about and it will affect the way that you cook some things. At home, you might cook 10 different things on your cooktop, you know, over the course of a day or two meal wise. But if you're camping and you're in dry camping conditions, you might want to consolidate that. Something else to think about is the cleanup process because that's what usually takes a lot of your water. One thing I recommend is this little gadget right here. It's just a, a plastic pan scraper. And see how it has this little corner here? It gets down in the corner of pans. If you've had something baked on, you can really sort of scrape all the gunk, you know, cheese, whatever is baked on your pan, and it will scrape it off. So when it comes time to do your washing, you'll have lots less to do. So you can use much less water because you don't have to put quite as much elbow grease in when you're using your water and your soap. You'll have already done it with your pan scraper. By the way, all the products that I mentioned today, we'll put uh, direct links to them in the description box down below. So you can just click the arrow to expand that box and you'll see the full list of all the products we talk about today. So the third thing I want you to think about before you set up your RV kitchen is the weight of the things you bring and their breakability. Because when you are rolling down the road, your RV is basically experiencing a level four earthquake. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. So there's a lot of moving and shaking going on in here when you're rolling down the road. So you need to be careful about how you pack things and you need to consider that weight and breakability. So for instance, we bring a lot of items that are sort of a thick plastic. It's microwavable. And it's microwavable. The other thing I bring plate wise are Corel dishes. They're not the prettiest thing in the world to look at, but they are break and chip resistant. So if this happens to bounce up against the, the wall here in our RV while we're going down the road, it's not going to break it. It's not going to chip it. <laughs> Baby girl. <laughs> Baby girl agrees with me. You want break and chip resistant plates and pretty much anything else you have. If you can get it in break or chip resistant, I highly recommend that because it's just gonna make things easier and make it safer for you when you open these cabinets. Like I said, you need to remember the weight of what you pack is important. So I pack these sort of non-stick porcelain pots that are made by Rachel Ray. You know, they're not super expensive, but they're, they're lighter weight. They cook well, the heat distributes pretty evenly on the bottom of them, but you know, they nest together, so that's nice for travel, and they don't weigh a lot. Butter is always the best secret ingredient. So this leads me to tip number four. 
you need to pack well and think about that as you are setting things up Number one thing that I recommend people do is layer between things that you stack, especially if they're metal. If they're plastic, you don't really have to worry about it. But we have these little pot dividers. They just stick down in there. They fit multiple sizes. And then you don't have to worry about the inside of your pots and pans getting scratched. It just provides that little buffer for while you're rolling down the road. And I have these in multiple sizes. They come in a pack, really easy. The other thing I recommend is good old fashioned shelf liner. Now you can buy this in a roll, super cheap. You can buy it in different colors if you want. You can buy it in thicker pieces if you want. It's just really what you are looking for. But this is what I stack between my plates. So if I wanna make sure my plates aren't rattling when we're going down the road, which isn't a big deal for us because we're in a travel trailer, but if you're in a motor home, plates rattling while you're rolling down the road is super annoying. So this will help dampen the sound of those plates and it will keep them from shifting, et cetera, while you're rolling down the road. What's going on? I have a mouse. Mouse? How do you know? Because he pooped on my nightstand. Is there a mouse pooping on your nightstand? <laughs> And he chewed up my tissue. Oh, he chewed up your tissue. He must be hungry, poor little guy. Poor little guy. <laughs> okay, so tip number five is to be aware of critter-friendly packaging. So many things that you purchase at the grocery store or that you think to pack in your RV will be in critter-friendly packaging. And what does that mean? Plastic packaging, which is plastic bags, storage bags, what have you, or paper bags. So sugar, crackers, things like that that are in plastic packaging that's really easy for a mouse to chew through. I suggest avoiding those if possible. You gonna go? You gonna hang out and eat your cracker, huh? Oh, you wanna eat your cracker? The easiest thing to do is just to get small plastic containers that you can put those things in. For instance, here is some protein powder that we have. It's chocolate flavored. So we have it in just a little plastic container. And you know, Snapware is this brand, but there are lots of different companies that make these. You can find them pretty much anywhere, but we'll have links below to a set on Amazon. The other thing you can do is just use your old coffee cans. So you can just clean out a coffee can, put your sugar in there, put the lid on. It's gonna keep the mice and critters out, or at least slow them way down. We've only had really a major problem with mice one year, but once you have it, you will be majorly aware of anything that will be enticing to those little furry friends. So remember to, if you can, avoid plastic and paper packaging. So number six is to remember you've got a limited amount of space. So bring multitasking items. Anytime you can bring something with you that will perform more than one function, it gets two thumbs up from me because it's going to save you space. It's going to be more efficient. It's just the way to go. Two of my favorite things that I bring with me are my measuring cup that is for liquid or for dry products. So you can just flip it around for either way. And it not only measures cups, but it measures tablespoons teaspoons and milliliters. So pretty much all your measurements are right here. It also has fluid ounces for liquid. So it's a great little multitasking product that keeps me from having to pack all those different things. The other thing I like is my little cheese grater container. And this also functions as a storage option. So you can have it to grate your cheese. And once you've grated the cheese into the container, you can take this off and put this on and you can put this back on top and you can stick it in your fridge with your grated cheese. So not only is it a cheese grater, but it's also a little storage box as well. My wife makes a mean bruschetta. Well, technically I did not make that. Let's trade a joke. Trader Christie's bruschetta and 
seven. The last tip I have for setting up your RV kitchen is to be creative with your storage. Anytime you can find something that is a nesting item, that is good because it's gonna take up less space. So I have soup bowls in here inside mixing bowls and they all take up this one little area. So I can fit a lot of stuff in a small space. You can also buy pots and pans that nest, but I'm a picky cook, so I like nonstick and I haven't found nesting ones that are nonstick yet. But if you don't care about having nonstick, the nesting ones are a great option for you. The other thing I recommend is finding unique places to store things. So drawers that you may not access a lot for clothing or something like that, stick some pots and pans in there. The one place that I think is underutilized for a lot of people is their actual oven. So in our oven, you will see, I actually store my pots and pans in here. So I've got a muffin pan. I actually have a cedar plank for grilling. I have a flat little uh, cookie sheet. So all those goodies fit right here and they're out of the way. You just have to remember to take them out before you hit the road. I also have a cast iron skillet stored in here. The one thing you need to remember is on the very bottom down here, most ovens have a cord right there and that is your gas supply. So I don't recommend storing anything down here because it can potentially knock into this if you're on a bumpy road or something and it might mess with your gas line there. So. Don't do that, but you can put it on these up here and you're relatively safe doing that. All right guys, so that wraps up this video of seven tips for setting up your RV kitchen. I'm sure many of you out there have lots of tips as well. I would love to hear them and I'm sure other viewers would love to hear them as well. So if you have a tip that I haven't mentioned here, please leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. So if you are new here, we ask that you please subscribe. That means a lot to us and you can become part of the Loloho community. If you have any tips that I haven't talked about here and you wanna share them with everybody else, we'd love to see them. Just leave them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. We'd greatly appreciate it. And until next time, Lolo. What? You're still here? All right, since you stuck around to the very end of the video, we're going to give you one bonus tip, and that is that some items may shift when in transit. Uh, the first time you start RV camping, you're going to go from point A to point B, you're going to get to your campsite, you're going to go to your kitchen cabinet and you're going to pop it open without leaning back. And what's going to happen is something's going to have shifted up there and it's going to fall out and bounce off your head <laughs> or your face or specifically your nose. Ah! And it can be quite painful at times. And I think Christy and I have both learned this lesson the hard way. <laughs> So that is tip number eight. Lean back when you open any kind of overhead cabinet in an RV, especially if there are hard slash heavy items inside because they will shift and they will fall out even though you thought you had everything properly squared away. That's it guys, tip number eight, sayonara.